Hi, I'm Rebecca and welcome to episode one of the Crea Bea Knitting Podcast. Wow, that feels weird to say. <laughs> um, so let me start with some introductions. I'm Rebecca, I live and work in London but I grew up in Scotland and I'm a knitter. Uh, I'm a crafter of all kinds, I like sewing and dabble in crochet, um, but I picked up knitting two years ago and I've not looked back. <laughs> and as well as being a big fan of knitting, I'm also a big fan of knitting podcasts. I really like the knitting podcast community, I love catching up with everyone, I watch a lot of podcasts. Um, and yeah, it feels like I have some real like fibre friends, which sounds really sad, <laughs> but I really like, um, yeah, hearing what people are knitting finding out what they're knitting on and there, you know, there are some people that they put a new video and I'm just like, oh, I'm so excited to hear how they're doing. So I thought maybe I could step into that community and yeah, I think the, the big thing is that I'm really excited to get to sit and talk about yarn and knitting for however long this takes. So yeah, let's jump in. Um, I really like the traditional format of like first objects and then whips and then some dream knitting and acquisitions. Although I don't have like a previous date that I have, so I can't say here's what I finished this last time. Um, but I figure I'll jump in and hopefully it'll work. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so to start off with what I'm wearing, so this is the Petite Knit Novice Cardigan Mohair Edition. Um, and I can show you, uh, it's way too big. So that's the baseline. Um, I had some major gauge issues with this. I think I'm not the only one. I've heard this before, um, but I did a gauge swatch and it was fine and I got gauge and then I tried knitting it up and it, the gauge is off by about three stitches so it's quite a bit too big. <laughs> you can see where the arm is versus where my arm is, <laughs> it's a big, there's a lot of a difference there. Um, so it's unfortunate because I, I like the pattern and I like the finished look uh, but it's still, it's still wearable, it's got a really wide neckline this way, I'm just wearing a little camisole under it and it's tucked in and yeah it's still it's still wearable, um, but probably not what I wanted it to be. The yarn for this is Hobby Diablo, which is quite an affordable mohair blend. Um, I picked up quite a bit of it when I was starting to knit with mohair, um, as it was affordable. Mohair can be quite expensive. Um, and it was, I liked knitting with it, it, it was fine. Um, this is knit with two strands. However, the colour that I bought it in was white, or I think it's called Oyster, and when I knit it up I just felt like a, I don't know, like a marshmallow. Uh, so I dyed it. I just used red dye. Uh, I used the dark green red dye, which you might find hard to imagine. Um, but yeah, that's what I used and it worked out fine. And now it's this like pretty sage green colour. Um, I finished this maybe six months ago and it's been summer so I've not really had a chance to wear it so yeah I'll be interested to see how it fits its way into my wardrobe now the summer is starting to go. I see that with a nice sunny view outside. Um, so yeah that is what I'm wearing. So let's jump into finished objects. A bit of context I pretty much always, so I'm a, I'm a garment knitter, I like to knit sweaters and cardigans and I dabble in socks and accessories but that's the main, your know, garments are what I really focus on, what I enjoy knitting um, and so how I usually manage my whips, that sounds very formal, but how I usually do things is that I have um, something really simple like stock in it and then something with a bit of texture or a bit of thought to it uh, that I can pick up when I want something more challenging and so usually I have two garments on the needles however about a month ago start of September I went to Scotland for um, for two weeks and my projects that I was working on were either too bulky or almost finished so I started two new projects so I have a lot going on in terms of whips and finished objects right now but uh, yeah it's not the norm so bear with me got some hair in my eye so my first finished object um, is this. It is, um, I'm aware I just said I don't want to look at marshmallow and then immediately knit a cardigan in marshmallow form. <laughs> uh, 
But this is the um, cardigan number seven by My Favourite Things Knitwear. Um, I'll pop a cut in, cut away in here so you can see it better. And I knit this in uh, Drops Air and it's beautiful. <laughs> I really love this. So, um, firstly about the pattern. The pattern is amazing. It is a real beginner friendly pattern if you are new to garments or new to even to cardigans like the back and forth. It's a top down raglan and it's just really detailed. There are some really nice um, like little details in the pattern that keep you really well on track. Um, I think it calls for a chunky weight. It's definitely a size 7 needle um, or I think it's a size 6. But the pattern calls for a strand of drops air and a strand of drops kiss silk. Um, so I thought I had enough leftover white from this and then I didn't and then I found some more once I was finished the, the garment. So I decided to opt out of putting, I didn't include the kiss silk mohair and I thought it was fine. Um, I've made one before and I didn't use the mohair in that one and it was fine. Um, it's not, it's a nice, it's quite a nice fabric you can see and the drops air I don't know if you can see the halo, but the drops air itself is really fluffy, so I don't think I missed too much. And this way, it's really soft. I can find more hair, but itchy. Um, so I thought this would be really, really wearable. So I'm so excited to put this on. Um, it's pretty fresh off the blocking mats. And I used uh, wool wash for the first time. I usually use detergent, but I picked up some wool wash, and so it smells like nice and sheepy, <laughs> which I really like. Um, and so this is done, however, I still have to add some buttons. So I have buttons. Um, this is my buttons, it's going to focus, kind of. Um, so this is really pretty and I've also still got about this much left. So that's a, a good point about this pattern, um, it's really economical. I had five skeins of drop air and I have maybe two thirds of a skein left. So you can get this out of out of five skeins in the fourth size I think I made, third or fourth size. Um, which means that it's a really, you know, it's a 100% wool cardigan and uh, it's really soft and lovely um, but it, it's not breaking the bag, it's maybe less than £30 to make it. So yeah, we definitely recommend this. Um, one thing is that I'm considering adding some embroidery. So um, it's a really plain simple cardigan but it's a really good base for things and since I have this much left I'm considering adding some daisy embroidery around the neck. Um, I've seen some really nice patterns, there's the lazy daisy cardigan which is very similar um, from, my, from what I can see uh, but it has daisy stitched on and I met with Grace from Maida Maida um, back at the start of September and she just finished a blue cardigan number seven with crocheted flowers. I think it's really cool but I like a neutral palette so I was thinking of doing some like self-coloured daisy stitches on it um, and we'll see. I'm excited to try it. I think I'll give it a go and worst case I don't like it I can just cut them back off <laughs> uh, but yeah I thought that could be a fun way of doing things. So that is my first whip. Sorry, no. It's my first FO. <laughs> so, moving on to my second FO um, is in this bag. This is um, the a Stitcher tote bag from Stitcher Tees. I also have um, one of those zip bags. Oh, it's covered in yarn. Story of my life. Um, I got these really recently, start of the month, and I really like them. I follow Stitcher Tees on Instagram, and I like all of the behind the scenes pictures and it just seems like a really wholesome business. So yeah, I was really happy to, to pick those up. They just started a set of pastel ones which look really pretty. They do t-shirts and things as well. Um, and this is holding my sock gear at the minute. So um, this is, as I said, my first, my second FO is per socks. So here's the first one. The second one is not blocked. Um, I only have one sock blocker. But that's fine because I usually finish one sock before the other one and so I usually block one and then immediately put the second one on. But I finished these in Scotland so I came home with two uh, ready like finished socks. <laughs> um, so yeah, I need to block the second one still. So these are, uh, um, they're really pretty actually. It's um, uh, self-striping and it is the Cascade Heritage Prints. I can't remember the, the, the colourway name. 
Um, and these were my stepdad. So last Christmas, I made my mum a pair of socks for Christmas and my stepdad really liked them and asked for a pair. So I made him a pair and he wears them every day. <laughs> um, and he sent me a message that he was so excited when it was cold again, because he could put his socks on, like he wears them when he comes home from work um, and puts them on. <laughs> and he was really excited that it was cold enough for them again. So I decided um, just to give the man more of what he loves and make him some socks for Christmas. Um, and that leads pretty much nicely into some, some whips. So this is the first one. And um, what I thought I'd do is make a set of three. Uh, so yeah, I'm needing six socks for one person. So he is very knit worthy to be fair. Um, and so I thought I'd try and pull out some of the colors in this and then make two textured pairs. So one that's like a cell striped and then two that are plain with texture. So this is my, my first whip and it's, it's barely a whip, it's a cuff. <laughs> um, so this is the yarn um, and as you can see it's the, it's the plum, it's called deep plum. Um, and this is all I have, it's just the cuff. <laughs> but I'm going to make the Hermione everyday socks. I've made them before, I love them. I have my own pair and they're my favourite hand knit socks. I almost always use EPNs, um, and you can see because yeah, I have one DPN that I've used so much that he's bent, <laughs> or she's bent, they're bent. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see that's him holding straight, and there's one that just veers off to the side. <laughs> they're very, very well used and well love needles. Um, I usually cast on with like four and knit the fifth, and then I then I pull down and do like I split the stitches over three and I find that really fast. So I can do the leg and the foot really quickly um, with three needles. But I thought I'd give small like nine inch circulars a go and we'll see. Um, I put these, I did the cuff on DPNs and then put them on here and honestly the circumference is still too small. I think it's because of the ribbing. So I'll pop these back on DPNs and do a couple of rounds and then try again on the nine inch. I just find them really fiddly. Um, but I think I can get past that. And then, um, yeah, that's gonna be a, a Hermione everyday sock. And then I've also got this, again, you can see it's the same olive green. Um, again, Cascade Heritage. And I'm going to make maybe a three by one rib sock or maybe a three by three rib. Um, Andrea Mowry has their, her everyday sock and I really like it. I saw it on her podcast the other day. So maybe I'll make that one. Um, these are really, I like these, there's a really wide range of colours and this suited me well to get planes and patterns. Um, I really like knitting with it, it feels really luxurious, it's a really soft yarn, I presume it's, yeah, it's 75, 25. Um, that being said, I made my boyfriend a pair last year, a red pair. He wears how many, he has two pairs of handmade socks and he only wears handmade socks and he doesn't really wear socks but if he has to wear them he'll wear one of his handmade ones and they're felted and they're, they're so they're in such bad state but his red ones um have worn pretty well for socks that get worn pretty much every day so yeah that, that's it for my fo's um now to move on to the whips okay so time to talk about my first whip um and it is in this beautiful bag <laughs> which i picked up um from a seller on etsy it has a little Dragonfly, um, I think it's a stitch, is it a progress keeper? I'm not really sure the difference. Um, it's lovely. I'm not a big project bag person. Um, most of our projects are like in random boxes <laughs> around my house. Um, however, when I was traveling, um, well, traveling, when I was going to Scotland, I realized I didn't have anywhere to put projects. So I picked up a few bags and this was one of them. Um, I was worried when it arrived that it wouldn't fit a sweater, but it does, and some extra yarn. So, that's a good sign. So, let me pull this out. Um, so this is the No Frills No Frills sweater by Petite Knit. I know it sounds like I make a lot of Petite Knit patterns. I don't think I do. Maybe I have recently. But this is the, the No Frills, and it's it's... So pretty. Um, I'll add a cutaway so you can see um, the full thing. And so I finished the body and I finished one sleeve and I just have the ribbing to do on my second sleeve. And I'm so excited because I love this. I really wanted something that would wear well and I could wear either over dresses and skirts or I could wear like under 
my big jacket and some boots and some jeans and it would look quite chic, I know. <laughs> but I really like this pattern. Um, so talking first about the pattern, it's good, it's really simple, it's straightforward, it's petite knit so it's not, um, it doesn't hold your hand all the way, like the cardigan number seven was a real hand holding pattern. This is more like, do this, <laughs> done. Um, the only thing about this is that it's huge. So the pattern has 20 centimetres of positive ease. It's knit top down, so I was planning, based on my size, I was going to knit the fourth size. Um, so I cast on for that and then I tried it on just before I was getting to the, dec the the right number of increases for the third size and I thought this is this is already way too big or this is perfect sizing even for an oversized sweater. So I kept it at the third size. And I cast on again, I would definitely cast on for the, the third size, um, which I guess has, has, I'm not sure exactly how much less but positive ease. Um, but otherwise it's been really good. I've heard some mixed People have been really mixed about this. I, I watched a podcast the other day where someone said it was a real slog to get through this. I had the opposite. This Sorry, there's a siren. Perks of living in London. Um, they said it was a real slog and I find this an absolute dream. This has flown off my needles. It's a DK weight, um, stocking it on size four and I've, it's gonna be done in like less than three weeks, I reckon, or like it's gonna have taken less than three weeks. So I really liked it, but I think part of that's to do with the yarn choice. So let me show you this up close. Um, it is um, it's two it's D, so it's a DK weight. Uh, well, no, that's not true. It's a DK weight pattern, but I'm holding together two strands of fingering weight yarn, um, and this is really interesting. I'm not gonna get. I think I have to show you this, but I don't know if you can see the ply on this. It's two strands tied together, and one is like a natural, and one is like a like a latte, like a really pale brown. Um, and so it's kind of giving this really pretty depth of colour. It's also tweedy, so you can see it has like little specks of black in it, which means that when you get knitted in, you end up with these little flecks. Um, and yeah, I, I love this, I love this so much. So this yarn is actually, I don't know, I could talk about this for forever, I think. So I saw Cap from Willy Witch, not Willy Witchcraft, a cat from Heather and Hops um, talk about this yarn and it's from Willy Knit. Um, they make coned yarn and so this was a cone, a 500 gram, well the cones come in 500 grams and this was Skidaw, that's the colourway, Skidaw Nip. The nips are obviously the little bubbly bits that are in the yarn. Um, and so it comes in fingering weight and you can um, hold the strands together for DK weight and I got perfect gauge with that um, and like I say it's been dreamy it's re it is it's rustic it's it smells really sheepy um, and it's it's not it's by no means scratchy but it's yeah it's, you can tell as well um, it smells so good oh. <laughs> and so I when I was originally knitting the fourth size um, I think a cone of 500 grams comes with like 2300 meters and so I think I needed a little bit more, so I was holding two, two strands together, and so I needed a bit more than 1,150. So I also ordered the, I also ordered the same yarn in a 125 gram cone. And so the 500 gram cones cost 18, 18 pounds, I think, and the 125 gram cost five pounds. Um, so yeah, the whole thing was what, 23 pounds, which I think is a complete steal. Um, that being said, I have rubbing to do and I have this, these were 100 gram balls, I reckon these are probably 80 grams, one slightly smaller actually, um, these are probably more than 80 grams, and I also have two little mini balls left, so I don't think I needed the second the second cone, I'll measure up, like I'll weigh it up when I'm done, um, but I think I'll find that I have more than 125 grams left, um, which is really cool because I want to knit this again, and I've actually... <laughs> Willy Knit has a sale right of 20% off on their merino cones. This is just their 100% British wool. So I've ordered their merino cone in navy um, to make the exact same pattern in navy <laughs> because I love it so much. It was a joy to knit. I'm really excited to wear it and I really want to get this. Um, I just want to see what it's going to be like after blocking. I'm super excited. So yeah, I think I have at least one more of this pattern planned, potentially two more. I'll talk about the other one in a bit. Um, but really excited and would completely recommend this for anyone who's in the UK. Um, Bully neck cones. Feels like a complete steal. 
So yeah, that's my first, my first whip. Hopefully soon to be an FO. <laughs> so that was my first work in progress and that was a Scotland one. So the yarn arrived on the, I think the morning that we left for Scotland. <laughs> and I was furiously swatching uh, before we left to get the train. <laughs> and then I have my second, so I knit that on the way up in the train and loved it. And so my second whip is also my a Scotland whip <laughs> in terms of I was working on it in Scotland. Um, but I got the yarn ordered to, to home to my parents and it was there and waiting when we arrived. So a bit of context, um, I have not done much color work knitting. Um, I'm a bit intimidated by it actually. I really like cables and texture, I find that very, I find it quite easy actually, um, but colour work I find quite challenging and so, but that's that's not acceptable, I wanted to improve it so I thought let's, you know, let's do something really simple and do a full colour work sweater as your first project. So I've actually done a couple of headbands, um, really is just big swatches um, and different yarns to try and practice the colour work technique. Um, the first one I did didn't work out well, the second one did and that was a lesson in dominant dominant colours. Um, I'm a continental knitter so I was knitting one continental and throwing the other colour and I switched them around and I found that went much better in the second headband. So I thought yeah let's just go make a, make a jumper. <laughs> so I ordered yarn, I got a voucher, my birthday's in August and I got a Jameson's and Smith voucher and ordered some beautiful yarn but it arrived and I thought this is fingering weight yarn and a colourwork sweater for my first colourwork sweater. This this isn't it. Um, and whilst I still fully plan to make, it's going to be the Birkin sweater by Kate, I think Caitlin Hunter, making that up. Um, but the, the the Birkin, I'll pull a picture. That's what I was going to make. However, I decided to, I needed a quick win with colour work before I jumped into something that, that needed that much time and effort. And so I was heavily influenced, um, firstly by Fernanda of Little Monkeys and Me podcast, and then by um, Laura of The Knitting Pickle and Brogan from Willy Witchcraft who all cast on um, the Maya cardigan and I'll pop a picture of what the cardigan is meant to look like. Um, it's a free pattern knit up in Let Lopey yarn um, from Istex and I loved it and they all talked about how they just flew off the needles and they really liked it. The only issue was that it's a steaked cardigan and I thought I was probably already being a bit too ambitious to go straight into a colour work jumper for the first time. Steaking is probably a bit too much all to fit in one project. So I converted the, the, the pattern um, into a top down sweater. And so this is where we're at. Um, so this is the sweater. Um, this is the yoke. I have one sleeve done and I'm I've started the second sleeve, but I've just got maybe four or five rounds done um, of them since I picked up. So yeah, I really like this. Um, it's definitely not perfect. You can see a little bit of puckering. Um, I think especially on the, the rows where I used only the main colour, I found some puckering there. I'm hoping this will block out. <laughs> I really hope it'll block out, really. <laughs> the arm is also a little bit tight. Um, and I don't love, there are decreases in the arm, or well, increases because in the pattern you work up. And so it's quite a gradual decrease. But then once you get to the colour work, it's just all the same stitch count. And so there's quite like a, a sharp, can you see that on the bottom? I don't know. I don't know if I love that. But it looks fine on. Um, and this bit's just a, it's not super tight, it fits on fine, but I think I'd like to block it out a little bit. Just give it a bit more, a bit more room in there for my, for my arms. So we'll see. Um, I'm really chuffed with this. I think it looks really nice. I think it looks really, um, it looks quite well done. I think it looks better on camera. Like in my head, I can see all you know, like the individual stitches and I think, oh, that could be neater. But I think holding it up, it's really lovely. Um, so the yarn I'm using is, so let me finish off with the pattern, sorry. <laughs> I found it quite simple to do. Um, there are some short rows in the back. Um, and I, yeah, I find it really quite simple. I basically just worked backwards in the pattern. The only things that were a bit difficult were the short rows. I made them up. <laughs> I don't know if I did how many short rows I meant to have. I found the pattern confusing to do reverse short rows. I've not done them before. So putting them the right way around was quite complicated. But I'd just done the short rows on my no frills. So I just did the same thing, really. <laughs> 
I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but I think it looks fine. It's really even and it fits well, so I think I'm happy. And it's pulled up, the, like that back neckline sits higher than the front, so I think it's done the job. And the other thing was the sleeve decreases. In the pattern, you start at the cuff and you cast on and you go up, and then you... It says like, knit... Like, increase every X round until the sleeve reaches this size. And because I was doing the other way around, I didn't know exactly, like I could kind of guess based on my row, my row gauge here how much this would take up. But yeah, I did some maths and I ended up increasing, I think in the past one it said to be eight and I did to be four at the decreases and it was fine. So, and it, it, the sleeve length, length is good. So it's another one I'm excited to block and actually showing it here has given me a bit of, I put this down for a bit, I put this down for about a week. Um, I finished, I don't know if this is a thing, but I can't stop mid color work. Like I did all the sleeve in one and I did this yoke pretty much in two days. Um, like, like two different knitting sessions. So once I get into the colour work, I don't want to stop, I just want to keep going. So I want to get the sleeve to a place where all I need to do, like get around to basically here. And then I just have to maybe have an hour or two or three <laughs> to just power through the last bit by myself. And then yeah, we'll get it blocked. Um, so exciting. Hi, so my camera keeps overheating, <laughs> so it keeps cutting me off, um, but we'll try this again. So I was talking about my colour work, and so the yarn. Um, so I'm using Let Lopey in two colours, the natural white and the <laughs> mid grey. Um, and it's a rustic yarn for sure, it's by far the most rustic thing I've worked with, and finding it it. Um, it's not rough on my hands at all, but it's itchy. Um, even if I'm if I'm sitting knitting in like pajamas with this on my lap, it's itchy through my pajamas. <laughs> so I'm a bit worried about wearing this. If I'm being honest, um, we'll see. It might be like a proper layering piece where it goes over like a turtleneck. Um, but I'm hoping blocking will soften it up. I've heard good things, and yeah, we'll see. Um, I ordered as per the pattern, seven skeins of my main, so I had to do some calculations because in the picture you'll see it's like a very multicoloured and I just did it in two tone. So I ordered seven skeins of my main colour and four skeins of my contrast. And I'm pretty sure that this and this is enough to finish my sleeve, which means I have two of this and one of this left. Um, which actually means, I think these were like 3.30 a ball from, I think we'll wear, Wool Warehouse, sorry, hiccup. Um, which means that this cost less than £30 in the end to make, which I think is well priced. Um, I feel like I'm hampering on a bit about cost of yarn. I just um, want to be really transparent about it. I think there's a lot of like, it's quite an expensive hobby. <laughs> um, and there are a lot of like podcasters who, or people that I watch or follow on Instagram with like huge stashes and who can who spent quite a lot of money on yarn, and I, 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 I have a lot of respect for that. Like that's amazing. <laughs> Part of me wishes I could too. Um, but yeah, I'm usually just trying to find like a budget option, um, and I'm not unwilling to splurge every now and then on a really nice piece, or like the yarn. I've got. Um, I'm really eyeing up some Filcolana, or maybe some Sanna's Scarn. Again, these aren't expensive yarns, but just a bit more, just a bit pricier, um, to make up another jumper soon, and that's probably going to cost about like. £70 worth of yarn and in my head that's a lot of money to spend for a, a jumper um, and I know if you calculate it and you think well the time spent, the entertainment value, it's 100% wool, I get all these things but um, yeah I usually try not to spend more than maybe £40 a project and so when it comes out, when I get to recreate something the way it's meant to look and it's not super expensive that's really exciting and I just want to share that I guess because um, yeah I think there's a lot of, it's a really, it can be a really expensive hobby. Um, so yeah, this is what I have left. Um, what I need to do is find a pattern to use up three skeins of Let Lopey. I have seen some felted wool slippers, which I'm considering. Um, my only issue, so I don't know if I have enough. I have, each of these is 100 meters, so 300 meters in total. And I just don't know if I have enough to make the felted slippers. Um, you knit them up and then you pop them in the washing machine. The other thing is I have different colors, so I'd have to, colour block them, which is not, I'm not ruling that out. But yeah, I'd love to hear 
some, I guess it's not scrappy, it's three skeins, but it feels like scrappy projects for a little bee. And so yeah, hopefully this will get me done in the next couple of weeks. Um, maybe even, I have a busy weekend planned, but maybe I can get some more sleeves done today. I'm excited. <laughs> so that's my second whip. Okay, so I have one more whip and then a bit of acquisitions um, and bits and pieces. So let me show you my last whip. And this one is a labour of love. <laughs> um, so this was my like last, this is like the main thing I was working on before I went to Scotland. Um, and I was kind of sad to leave it here actually, but it's pretty bulky. So this is the jewel jacket and I can't remember who the pattern is by. Um, and I'm not showing it off very well. <laughs> um, again, I'll pop some cutaways in of this. It is a, so the context being, I finished a cable knit cardigan, the Fri Friday, Friday cardigan by Afton Stick. And I loved it. I thought it was really fun to knit. It was really beautiful. And so I went on the hunt for another cable knit outerwear piece. <laughs> and honestly, I found this and I love it, but it's not cables. <laughs> it's Trinity Stitch. And so you can see, like, there are cables for sure. Um, but the cables are such a small part of what you're doing. And what the most of it is, is this. This beautiful stitch called the Trinity Stitch or the Cluster Stitch. Um, and then it has like some ribbed panels under the arms and it's also going to have fisherman's rib sleeves. So the pattern is lovely, um, it's complicated, like I had to sit down and really read through it to get my head around it, it's quite complex but once you're in the swing of it it's completely fine. Um, it's, I'm not going to do full length, I think the full length is like 50 inches can't be right. The pattern definitely says 50 inches, but that seems like it should be centimetres. It definitely should be centimetres. That would be 100 centimetres plus. It must be 50 centimetres. Um, but usually I like to crop most things, so I think I'm almost ready to bite, to do the, bind, the ribbing at the bottom. And then I'll have to pick up here and here for the button bands and the neck band, and then the sleeves are fisherman's rib. Um, and yeah, the pattern is, is cool. Like I say, it's a real labour of love. Um, I guess I'd like to finish this in October, we'll see. The other thing is that this is pretty bulky. So let me talk about the yarn. So I am using Drops Alaska. Um, I got this in the sale, we'll go ahead and the summer sale, and I got 19 balls of this. I don't know what I was thinking of doing with 19 balls of yarn. <laughs> um, it wasn't this pattern, it was just, I just bought 19 balls of it and then went hunting for a pattern afterwards. Um, some things about this, so it's, it's advertised as an iron weight, but it's 70 meters per 50 grams, which means it's 140 per 100 grams. And that's pretty bulky. Well, that's definitely, I think of an iron weight as being around 200 meters per 100 grams. So it's definitely thicker than your standard iron weight, which meant that a few, I tried a few other patterns and couldn't get gauge. It worked for this. The pattern originally called for an iron weight and a strand of mohair, and I'm just doing the iron weight, well, I'm just doing Alaska, and so it worked fine. Um, I did notice that Laura from Knit Pickle used Alaska to make a Chunky Dahlia, I think that's what it's called. Or was that a Magnolia Bloom? I think it's a Magnolia Bloom um, in this with a Shana Mohair. Um, but yeah, so it's 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 nice. Um, I've used, so I have, I have a lot of yarn left. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight balls left, nine balls left, did I count this one? I'm not sure. Eight or nine left, which means I've used about half of the yarn. Um, which means that this, I think, is going to end up weighing like 800, 900 grams. <laughs> so it's gonna be pretty chunky. It's called a dual jacket, right? It's not a cardigan. Um, but it means this, this project is like not portable. I have to knit it at home. And yeah, it's just like pretty chunky and pretty heavy going. Um, so yeah. It's going to take a while to finish, but that's okay. Onto the fisherman's rib sleeves pretty soon. And I'm looking forward to having this. I ordered this, this was called sea green or sage green. It's definitely blue. It's like a, yeah, it's definitely like a, like a greeny blue. So it's not really in my wheelhouse and I'm definitely not sure what I'll wear it with, but we're going to do it anyway, because we started. <laughs> and, um, 
at first I found this pattern really hard on my hands. You knit the back, you knit the back square first, like this. You knit this top square first, and then you pick up and stitches for the shoulders. So you knit like down here, and you increase on both sides, and then you join in the round under the sleeves. Um, and it's all knit back and forth. And yeah, the Trinity stitch is purl three together, and then knit three in one stitch. And I can tell you, it takes ages, it's a slow stitch, and it's quite, it's quite hard on my hands. So it took me a while to get into it, but once I got into it, I got really into it. And now, if I'm honest, I've lost a bit of mojo on it because my other projects are nice and easy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm hoping to finish this by the end of October, so I can get some wear out of it, and just so I can get something else. Hiccups again, on oh, my needles. So yeah, that is my jewel jacket in Drops Alaska. And that's all for my whips. Um, oh, a lot of whips. <laughs> but next up, I want to show you a bit about some dream knitting um, and some acquisitions. Perfect. So, <laughs> okay. So, on to the third and final. Did I get much closer? I'm not sure. Um, but on to the final part of the podcast, which is a kind of dream knitting slash acquisitions. I know a lot of people say we like acquisitions head away now. Um, which I understand, I think especially when people are like piling up yarn they've been given or bought, <laughs> it's a lot. Um, I have a combination here of a few things that I've picked up recently combined with some stuff in my stash um, that are going to make up some projects I'm planning to work on in the next few weeks. So um, this is the first thing to talk about, so this is some more of the Hobby Diablo which I think I bought to try and make another one of these. It was quite a while ago and so this is what it looks like. Some mohair, and I think the colour here is chestnut. Um, and I think I have 10 skeins of this. No, I have 9 skeins of this. So, um, yeah. I, I don't know why I do it, because I <laughs> I don't love Diablo. Like, I don't mind it. Um, I think I prefer Drops Kid Silk. But for some reason, whenever it's on sale, um, I, I buy some. I don't know why. So I have this, and I have one more... I think I have 10 balls in a, in a dusty rose colour. Um, but, diverging a little bit for a story, it's not really a story, but um, I had all my yarn in one Ikea box, like one white Ikea, you know those little ones that fit in the Calax? It was in there. And over the summer, I kept buying yarn and casting a lot of it on, but at the end of summer, sort of August time, I was doing a bit clear out and organising some fabric and organising some yarn and realised I have a lot more yarn than I realised I had because I kept ordering sweater quantities and instead of putting it in the box, I was just putting it somewhere else. <laughs> so I had a lot more than I thought and so I'm really trying to not buy anything fresh, um, like sweater quantity wise. I see this, I've just told you I've ordered a cone of merino wool. Um, but I'm, I'm basically consciously trying to work through some of the stash stuff and it's definitely worked. I currently only maybe have three sweater quantities left in there um, and I have plans for all of them. Not that I need to explain myself because I can have a yarn stash if I wanted to but I feel like I need to for myself. Um, and then I also started a crochet project, a crochet blanket for the first time and so there's a lot of it is like yarn for that blanket which might never get finished. We'll see, it's acrylic and it's there. We'll see what happens with it. So this was deep stash in terms of, it was definitely bought I think last year um, to make something that I'm not sure anymore what it was and so I thought to I'd repurpose this and try and find a new home for it. So I have two, this is going to get split across two projects because I'm not going to hold this two strands together, I'm just going to hold a single strand with another yarn and my two projects are the following. So the first one is going to be the, Mag is it called the Magnolia Bloom cardigan? It's definitely from Camilla Vad who made the Magnolia Bloom and it's a top down cardigan and it's got Sorry, the light just gotten really different in here. Um, it got it's got like the classic floral lace from her patterns around the top. Um, and so I'm going to make it with one strand of this and one strand of Cascade Heritage, and I think this is called pumpkin spice. Um, the context behind this is I wanted to make a vest. Oh, that's coming undone. I wanted to make a vest, and I started making a vest. Is there anything of it left here? Yes, a little bit. 
since I did it. But I started making a vest, um, and it was, I think, maybe my favourite things knitwear. And it was, it was huge. It was way too big. It was massive. I blocked it out and I put it on and looked like an idiot. So I lost a bit of my vest love at the time, and it was sitting in my stash. So again, I thought, let's get this knitted up. And so I unravelled some of it, but not all of it, because I'm a bit lazy. And so I had this, and I think I had, I think I've lost a skein of this. I think I had three skeins for that project, and I needed four. Do I need three? I don't think I only need three skeins. 600 meters is definitely not enough for a cardigan. So I ordered another, I had three, I ordered one more. And somewhere, I swatched with this recently, so somewhere in my life is another balled up ball of this. Um, and so yeah, I'm going to hold them together to make the Magnolia Bloom cardigan. It is really economical with yarn. It requires just over, just over a thousand metres. So that is four of these and five of these. So yeah, it's pretty much going to use all my yarn, I think. I might crop it. I usually crop pretty much everything, so it might take a little bit less. Um, but that's the plan. I'm looking forward to... I'm looking forward to making that. So that's the first item that I'm planning. And I'm a bit torn about whether to cast that on now or to cast that on once my once this is done. Because that's like a more complex pattern because it has a lace on it. But maybe I'll wait till I'm on the sleeves on, on, on my cardigan because it's just fisherman's ribbon around and then cast this on. I'm not super feeling it right now, but I have done the swatch, so it's ready to go whenever. So that's the first thing I'm gonna make with this. And the second thing is another <laughs> no frills sweater so I just really like the idea of having like a nice cozy brown one and I just think having that neutral beige one I'm almost finished and then a blue and then this could just be perfect that being said I'm holding these together and they're now quite different so <laughs> I picked up some Drops Nord Drops Nord is the is Drops' sock yarn it is 45% um, alpaca 30% polyamide and 25% wool it's really soft I made socks in these before they were amazing but they were too small so I had to give them away <laughs> but I love the wool um, and so I thought this would make quite a nice like camely brown but like with a bit of a twist no frills cardigan not no frills, no frills sweater so I think this is the one I want to cast on but if I cast this on I want to cast on the blue one immediately when it arrives and so I'm going to have two no frills on the needles, I either even have two sets of 4 millimeter long needles so I need to pick one or the other ultimately and maybe I'll swatch with this soon and decide if I swatch with this if that's right um, and now I'm seeing it I think maybe I have I think maybe I have five I must have ten balls of this and ones with my my other swatch yarn because I calculated and I definitely have enough so basically I'm this is 225 meters so that's 1100 that would be a cropped version yeah that makes sense Um I have six balls of this drops Nord I think and I have way more than that, I have eight balls. Um, this is from Will Warehouse, it just arrived last week. I really like, uh, it's in the colour Chestnut, if that helps. Um, and yeah, so that was £18.40 and then I think maybe Apple is maybe another £10 for all, well, £20 total, so £10 for each skein, each half of the skein, wow, <laughs> about £20 total. So yeah, it's not going to be super expensive. Um, so I'll swatch for this. I just need to check I like these two together on my face. Um, and that's my plan. So that will clear quite a bit of my stash. I'll get rid of the Diablo and I'll get rid of the Cascade. And I have a lot that's going to go. Okay, it's switched off again. <laughs> um, but I have one final thing. So that was the last of my chestnut brown gingery projects. And I need to decide which one to cast on first, really. Um, but yeah, that's that's the next thing I'll be casting on. And um, together with the merino no frills, I think the postage on that was five to seven days, but it arrived. I got a dispatch email yesterday. I think it may come tomorrow. So should I wait and see if it comes tomorrow and then cast that on, or should I just cast on the ready one? I'm not sure. So the last two things to show you are just like tiny things I picked up. So it was my birthday in August and I felt I needed to treat myself to things, which is not true. Um, but I, that's when I bought the woolly knit cone and I also used a gift voucher for um, the yarn for the Birkin 
What I also bought <laughs> was a drop spin doll. So I watch um, Cat from Heather and Hops, it's one of my favourite podcasts, and she does quite a lot of spinning. And she's gotten into a lot more recently. And I thought, it's not very expensive for a drop spin doll, like, let's give it a go. So I ordered this on Etsy, and it came with this like braid of, of fibre. Um, I think it's Romney, I'm pretty sure it's Romney. And I got it in this, I don't know why I chose, I chose this colour. I regret that. But I started it yesterday. And so, it's interesting. This is 100 grams. And I maybe did a fifth of it and it took me an hour. <laughs> um, but I have a fibre, like I have a, there's something there. And it's on this, um, it's on the spindle here. And um, you can't really see, but it's like, it's really, this actually makes it look quite uh, even. It's definitely not even. Um, but I think I find it quite interesting. So I definitely learned a lot from it. Um, I think it could be quite therapeutic. It just takes forever. Like I know I knit and knitting takes forever, but there seems to be such a direct output. Whereas this <laughs> takes forever. Um, I could just buy the yarn. <laughs> Which is silly, because I when people will say like, oh, why do you knit a sweater? You could just knit, you could just buy one. But that's kind of how I feel about spinning so far. So we'll see. I'm gonna keep sticking with it. Um, it was definitely challenging. I find it really challenging to draft the fibres and to like feed them in equally. But yeah, so we have this to try and lots of fibre still. Um, if anyone has tips on getting into spinning, um, particularly keeping, like improving drafting, that'd be really useful. But I got this on Etsy. There were loads on Etsy. I think it was only about fifteen pounds for a drop spin doll in this, and I thought that was quite fun. Um, I'd like to go to a spinning class with a wheel and try that. So I thought this might be a good way to see if I liked it. Yeah. So I think my camera is telling me I have to stop because it keeps turning off. Uh, so my very last thing is uh, these two skeins. So uh, the weekend I went to Canterbury. Um, first time I've been there, and we drove. And on the way we. We're going past the yarn shop, so I said, can we take a little stop? So we stopped in Lavisham, Laversham, for some lunch and to go to the yarn dispensary, which is a really lovely yarn shop. Um, and it was very local yarn store vibes. It's in an old uh, pharmacy, so they have a lot of like apothecary shelving and they were just wrapping up a pumpkin making class where they were making little stuff. And they said pumpkins, it was, it was lovely. Um, so I got my buttons there for my cardigan number seven and I also, so usually if I go for like a souvenir yarn shop, I pick up a pair of, like a ball, a, a skein of sock yarn, um, cause you can always use sock yarn. Um, and it's usually relatively well priced. Like it's not, it's, it's expensive, but it's one skein, so it's fine. And um, for example, I went to Peak District earlier in the year and I got some Chatsworth Chatsworth sock yarn because we went to Chatsworth house so it's like a souvenir thing but I have so much sock yarn and I've got six socks to be knitted before Christmas so I thought that's silly get something else so I found these which is the Isager, Isager, Isager I'm not sure how to pronounce this um which is a Norwegian Norwegian I want to say now it's Danish I'm not sure it's a famous Scandinavian yarn brand <laughs> There's like this and like Rauma and they get talked about a lot. So I thought I'll get them and they were really reasonably priced. So I got one ball of this Highland wool for four pounds and I got one ball of silk mohair for six pounds, which is really well priced. However, I was like, oh yeah, I'll make a hat or something like a cowl. I will not be doing that with this because it's 212 meters uh, of fingering weight yarn. So I could barely make one socket of this. So my plan is as follows. I am going to pick up another ball of each. It's it's interesting because like I say, these were £10 for two. Um, I think I'm probably having to spend at least 15 if not £20 to get another skein of each because I can't find anywhere else this, as well priced as here and they only had this quantity. But um, Loop London, which is a yarn shop in Islington, which isn't super far from me, uh, they have some and I thought I could pick it up and go collect it. Um, and then I want to make a cowl. So I'll put the pattern in. Um, it is the something spiritual guardian cowl? I'm making that up. Something guardian from Kath, Kath, Kat, Kat, Heather and Hops. Um, I love it, it's cables. And I thought this would make a really good Christmas gift for some people. Um, both my mum and my stepmom I think would really appreciate it. But I thought I could practice and make one for myself. 
I think it requires a fingering weight and a lace weight. This Highland wool is definitely not fingering, it's definitely like a, I think it's probably lace. So I might just make the biggest size um, with these together and see what it comes out as. Because um, they have, there's like a long version and a, there's a baggy version and a tight version and a long and a short. So I thought I could make the baggy long version. Um, so even if I'm not on gauge, it still will fit. And then pick up some yarn to make them for Christmas gifts if I enjoy the knit. So those were all my acquisitions and new things and dream knitting. So before my camera dies on me again, um, I just want to wrap up and say thanks if you are watching this. If anyone's watching this, I don't know if anyone's out there. Um, I'm impressed that I sat this long and talked about yarn. I've got a bit of a headache. I didn't know that talking about wool could do that. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to put this out there <laughs> in the world. Um, and to hear from you if you've watched it and enjoyed it. If you leave a comment or like tell me you liked it just so that I... <laughs> some validation would be nice um and yeah if you've got any of these projects that i'm knitting on your needles or you're thinking of casting them on let me know um i'd also love to catch up with you on instagram so i'll pop my instagram handle down below sounds like shameless promotion doesn't it um but yeah i'd love to hear from some people because that was really my goal of making a podcast is to try and get a bit more involved in the knitting community so thank you for your time if you stuck around um Hopefully I'll make make another one of these in a few weeks if I can get over the trauma of posting at this time and um, if I've got some nothing to show. Uh, so that's all. I hope you have a good day and I hope you enjoy your knitting. Bye! <laughs>